Mr. David John Williams, outgoing chairman of the TTFA, or is it the incoming candidate of the TTFA? Whatever you are, sir, I acknowledge your presence. Other distinguished guests, fellow citizens, visitors, or members of the media, today is one of those days where this job is all about feeling good. And I do feel good. I've been down for the last week with a flu whose name I shall not repeat. But today is my first day out of work for just over a week. And I do feel good. Because this morning I spent, I opened up the morning at BP, being introduced to the work of our young technicians who are running that organization and its technical capacity. And then I've just come from a short cabinet meeting where the cabinet has approved 400 scholarships for our youngsters who have just completed their national exams. And now I am here in the presence of the leadership of football worldwide and local. So I should be feeling good, and I do feel good. But I must tell you, as President Infantino has said, we need to talk. And maybe today I should talk. Let me begin by saying this location here in Central Trinidad was not selected by accident, and it was not selected yesterday. But it was selected by those persons, or should I say that person, who saw Trinidad and Tobago and its future above all else. For those of you who forget, permit me to remind you that a long, long time ago when I was a young man, I was the Minister of Agriculture and Lands, Marine Affairs as well. And it was in that portfolio that I received a visit from one of our patriots, a man called Aloy Likwai, who came to me in his capacity as a leader or the leader of the cricketing fraternity. And he came to ask the government to provide to cricket that site, which is now the, what's it called? The cricket center. I think it's named after him, is it? The Cricket Center. And he made a case to the government that if we put that center in this location, we could lay the foundation for this area as central as it could be in the country, where land was available, where infrastructure converged to build a future for sport in Trinidad and Tobago, and cricket would take the lead. And it was against that intervention that the land was made available and the management and organizers in cricket put that facility up. Later on, further developments took place. And after that, as a football fan, if not fanatic, I watched from the parliament FIFA becoming an international disgrace. In speaking as a parliamentarian in Trinidad and Tobago to FIFA and to those who ran it, many of whom were familiar to us, I had reason to put on Hansard and elsewhere on political platforms that FIFA was a mafia. And having said that, I also included CONCACAF in misconduct. And one of my colleagues came to the parliament and told us that he had to apologize in Switzerland because I had called FIFA a mafia. Well, if it was a mafia, couldn't call it a dog. FIFA was a mafia. Soon after, the mafiosi got the attention of the international community and the international police. And the story is well known to all of us, especially here in Trinidad and Tobago. 
Then David John Williams came to me in my capacity as Prime Minister of Trinidad and today when I said to him, David, I don't want to see you, I don't want to hear. And David persisted, he persisted, he persisted in wanting to see me. He said, David, Trinidad and Tobago and football don't go together. And of course, FIFA is still a mafia. David persisted in wanting to talk to me. And eventually, to save myself from David, I allowed myself to see him. And he came. And he convinced me that he had an idea, a good idea. And this idea could work, and it could improve our situation. And I said, David, it couldn't work, it wouldn't work, because people make organizations, and I do not see the people who will change what I consider to be the football disaster. And then David wanted to see me again. And I said, David, you again? He said, but I want to bring to you the idea that there's somebody who's running for FIFA's leadership. And if that person wins, we would be able to change football and change FIFA. And I said, who is that? Because as far as I was concerned, all of them was mafiosi. And worse, an Italian. <laughs> and then he said, Infantino. And I said, is he going to run? And David said, yes. And he said he's going to support him. Because we are small islands in the Caribbean, but we have a lot of votes. And as you know, votes matter. I know that. <laughs> so he said, Infantino is going to run and we'll support him and we think he could win. And of course he won. He came through campaign and he won. He came back as president of FIFA soon after. And when he came with David and the team as a courtesy call at the diplomatic center, he too had this story about what could happen here. And David's idea apparently was sold to him he bought the story and he asked me whether in fact I would help and I said help how, I know help who now, but help how and the story of the public lands and this public partnership came up well presented by David again because David was always presenting the, presenting the story but I said to President Infantino then the government of Trinidad and Tobago has always been and it continues to be a major supporter of the sport of football in our country. But I'm not minded to jump on any bandwagon with any idea unless, unless you, President Infantino, gives me the assurance that you will demonstrate to us in Trinidad and Tobago that you will run FIFA with transparency, with integrity, and let it be moved from where it was to where it could be. And I said to him, if you give me that assurance that FIFA going forward would do that, then the government of Trinidad and Tobago would consider that there's hope for football in Trinidad and Tobago where similar problems exist and that taxpayers land would be made available. I was given that assurance and I was also given a small, not a plaque, but as far a FIFA flag dated April 10, 2017. I took that flag back to my office at home and I put that flag on a bookshelf over my head. It was my intention to throw it in the dustbin sometime soon after. But I can tell you, last night I looked at the flag and it is still there. And I was pleased to know that today I can go back home and look at that flag for keeps. Because so far, they say no news is good news. And we have not had news from FIFA to confirm that it is operating as a mafia. So I say no news is good news. But more than that, we have had the cooperation between FIFA, CONCACAF, 
and the TTFA towards the vision as presented by John Williams in those days. And that is what brings us here today. Because soon after we gave the commitment that we will consider the proposal, the proposal came before the cabinet and I want today to thank a minister who is not here. Minister Rambarat, Clarence Rambarat, Minister of Lands. Because it was his portfolio's responsibility, along with the Attorney General Office, to move this piece of land from the public ownership and use to FIFA, to TTFA, to allow this project to proceed. And because there was a sense of urgency, Minister Rambarat and the AG Office, they were instructed to move with urgency, and they did. And you heard the timelines as outlined to you by President John Williams a while ago. I think that was record-breaking, and I think it's deserving of accommodation. But more importantly, as we presented the land to the GTFA and committed to it, the cabinet decision was only a part. We had to wait to hear if the other part of the bargain would have been kept by FIFA, by President Infantino. I am pleased to tell you that on every occasion that I inquired, the response was positive, that the funds were committed, that the funds were being made available, and that the project is on the way. And this project is easily one of the smoothest that I have had any association with as Prime Minister or otherwise. I want to thank you, President Infantino. So this public land was made available. FIFA funds were made available. A lot of other things would have gone into it. I am sure some volunteer work went into it as well. To create great hope for football in Trinidad and Tobago and the region. But, ladies and gentlemen, a structure does not a vision conclude. This is just the beginning. I can tell you, a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Washington. And while I was there, I met Trinidad and Tobago Nationals one night. And one of the persons who came to see me and take part in that gathering was a certain Lincoln Tiger Phillips, who I suspect can still make the team. But he came to see me and to comment on how concerned he was about the state of football in Trinidad and Tobago and to wonder whether there's anything he can do which he can offer, which will be received in good spirit to see whether in fact something can be done to assist us to move from where we are to where we want to be. And I say this against the background that if people do not populate this building and behave in a particular way as people in the game of football, this building will remain mortar, concrete and galvanized and will contribute to no significant change in Trinidad and Tobago. When I look in Lincoln's book, he gave me a copy of it. The recent book is called Above and Beyond the Crossbar. Lincoln was one of our outstanding, if not the most outstanding goalkeeper we've had, who went on to have a tremendous career in playing and coaching to success in the United States, playing against some of the best footballers who in fact did play the game, including Pele. I looked in that book and Lincoln selected some of the iconic pictures of his career. And in there I see Jan Steadman, I see Warren Archibald, I see uh, De Leon, and I ask myself, where have all our footballers gone? Because I can tell you, if today we produce a team like that, President of FIFA, Italy, look out. We have produced some of the best footballing talent in Trinidad and Tobago. I think I saw Brent Sancho walking here a while ago. I might be wrong, but I saw somebody like Brent Sancho walking. Brent somewhere around. And we do have, in our schools, as I speak to you now, we have boys and girls 
who are relying on the management of this sport, not on the government. The government has played its part and the government will continue to play its part. What is missing is the management that we used to have when people serve for service sake and produce from it. Produce from it the talent that was waiting for that helping hand. Today, ladies and gentlemen, if we are familiar with failure, it is in the area of management of our sport. We featured prominently in very many sports at the highest international level, led by volunteers with far less resources than we have now. My friend Hazley Crawford is in here. He won an, an Olympic gold medal from Trinidad and Tobago. We had no stadium and we had no track, but he won it. We didn't have a velodrome like this, but a name, a name like Roger Gibbon was a household name in my time. And I was here when Chelsea and I think Spurs came to Trinidad and Tobago out of season to play against our team and to play an exhibition game. And after that, I played every game of football like I was recruited by, by, by Chelsea. That's what youngsters do. That's how youngsters, youngsters develop. Today, we have these facilities and we now have absolutely no excuse if we behave ourselves and accept from the taxpayers the hundreds of millions of dollars and the land that we've made available to those of you who manage football. You would have heard the minister speak about how many hundred million dollars went into sport. You would have heard the minister speak about how much millions went into football. But you would also have heard the voices that saying, government ain't doing nothing for sport, government ain't doing nothing for football, government government has no money government is an administration it is taxpayers money and every dollar that goes here is that dollar that was taken from somewhere else and from somebody else to make available to what you are involved in so having partnered with you having partnered with football to make this public asset land available to you and money available to those involved in the management of the game, the taxpayers can expect no less but a dramatic improvement and the full use of this facility in the vision in which it was presented and in the way it has been built for the purpose for which it was designed. So Trinidad and Tobago today holds out a model to the world of a facility like this, in a location like this, where not only footballers will occupy these rooms, because when there is a sporting uh, event involving cyclists, or involving swimmers, or involving anybody else coming to this location, this facility provides rooming, and board, and I hope good food, and good conduct for all those who will play sport in this country and in this location. We can now advertise this location to people who will come, teams and managers, to practice, to meet us, to play with us, to play against us, or just to be in a place that is so salubrious that if you came last, last season, you can come here, spend some time, and hope to come first next season. So ladies and gentlemen, I too would want to thank all those who had something to do with this, from the surveyors who surveyed the land, to the contractors personnel who helped to build it, to the management team that stood up against those who thought it couldn't have been done, and to those who allocate money at FIFA, who once again took a chance on Trinidad and Tobago. And we are happy that today the building is here, and I trust that TTFA owns it. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a special day for all of us. Especially, I want to acknowledge the youngsters and on their behalf, all those boys and girls and teenagers and those who one day will walk out of this building and walk onto an international field, could look back and say, I started my career 
at the home of football in Trinidad and Tobago. And on behalf of all the John Stedmans, and all the Leroy De Leons, and all the Warren Archibalds, and Wilfred Cave, and all those people who never had this, I'm sure they too would want me, President Infantino, to say to you, thank you, and don't forget us here in Trinidad and Tobago. We're happy to be your partner, and I love your tie. Thank you. Just a reminder, everyone, for more episodes with Shaka His Luck, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, interviews, and content.